Hello and welcome to the show. I'm here on Forza 7 with another Rallycross car build. Last time out, the Ford Woody was very powerful but not particularly controllable and its tendency to want to fall over was a little bit of a pain. This time around, something much more sensible. A Subaru Impreza. Now, the only time a sensible car has gone really so far was the Lancia 37 that was randomly drawn and that did go fastest. This certainly stands a chance of being very quick. Let's face it, it, it is much more suited to rallying than a lot of the vehicles that we have had go so far. Now, we are going to be wanting some Forza Aero because while... Game, are we gonna... There we go, thank you. Uh, because while, yes, we are going to be largely uh, dealing with... We're going to largely deal with tarmac. And while there is there is some dirt to, to trouble us, we've got to be fast on the tarmac as well. It's no good being just quick on the dirt. And the circuit we're going to... Ooh, actually some very nice big tyres around this car. 295's all about. That I like. That I like very much. Um, anyway, yes. Lots of tarmac for us to be dealing with. We can be immensely fast on the dirt, but if we are utterly terrible uh, around the tarmac, it probably won't be enough to see us go quickly. The Subaru has got plenty of PI to play around with, and it makes sense to me to focus heavily on the handling for this vehicle. We have got a long straight, absolutely, but getting this car quickly through the corners is going to be very important as well. And you know, the, the Virginia South layout that we're using is quite technical. There is a mighty straight, that is for sure, but the rest of it is pretty damn technical, to say the least. Now, we'll come back to things like gearbox and driveline and so on. We will see what we can do with the standard engine. Oh, we're probably going to be good to keep it. <laughs> the rules of this series, uh, the vehicles must use their standard engine if that can get to the top of S1 class. Uh, S1, S class, sorry. Um, this should be able to get to the top of S-Class with its standard engine. I mean, technically speaking, PI-wise, you'd probably be better off putting the V8 in this. That Generally, the way it seems to go, uh, from my experience of building cars in Forza, if you are building something for S-Class or whatever class, if you can put generally the V8 engine swap, you'd get more for your PI. However, that's not how this series is going to be working, so we're not going to. We are not going to. Uh, we will get 609 horsepower out of the vehicle. That is plenty of power. We'll even get a little bit of flywheel stuck on there as well. Can we get a drive shaft? Oh, we can get a first stage of drive shaft as well. You may, you might as well do this. Have a look around. See what bits. Sometimes you can sneak bits on. Uh, but the way that the Forza PI system works, while there is, it is a rounded number, so you see here, S800, uh, there is a kind of decimal point that you never see. Hence why, for example, we can get the drive line while we can get the flywheel on, which is why I will often always go and check. Even if my car's top of the PI, you'll always go and check, just in case. You can uh, sneak, sneak some extra parts on. There we go. The Subaru looks the part. I think it stands a very good chance of at least challenging the Lancia. It is more powerful, but it is also a little bit heavier. Will we see the first car into the 1 minute 14s? That is uh, the question, an interesting question for the uh, Impreza. So, to find out just how fast our Subaru is going to be, we have come to the Virginia International Raceway South layout. I will have five laps to try and beat the time set by the Lancia 037, a 115.2. The Audi Quattro is a 15.8, and then we're in the 16s and 17s with the cars further down. I expect, I expect this to be able to get near the front, certainly challenge the Quattro. Whether it's going to be challenging that uh, Lancia or not, I'm not 100% sure, but certainly against the uh, Quattro, we would expect to see some uh, some rivalry there. Straight line speed, what are we going to be looking at in towards turn one? Not quite as fast as the Woody, I don't think, but good brakes. We can be later on the brakes down here, as we would hope, let's face it. We would hope that, uh, ooh, as ever, there's that understeer on the exit. Oh, get back on the circuit, please, Subaru. Uh, yeah, we'd expect better brakes, and indeed, we do get them up over the crest we go. Try and not end up in the tyre bundle on the outside. Actually, it does get stopped pretty damn well down here. Now, feed the car 
through that uh, oh, through that section. Okay, it's a little bit squiggly on the exit, but I am yeah, I'm okay with that. This is still at the end of the day just a, a tester tester lap. It's from a standing uh, from rolling start, sorry, but not full not full race speed rolling start. So yeah, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter too much. Very scruffy out of the second chicane, which is also oh, I say chicane. Sorry, more second hairpin. It's a little bit of an awkward rejoin onto the circuit. Not sure we are quite able to be flat out around that corner, but it's a lot better than we have been with the last few cars. That's certainly far better than the Woody. I don't think the Lancia can be flat out either around there. I think the front of the Lancia picked up a little bit. If I am remembering correctly, it's 20.5 from a scruffy opening lap. What are we going to be topping out at? 160 miles an hour? That's not too shabby for the Subaru. We are going to have to be at the slightly earlier braking point. Uh, with the car being that fast, we are going to have to brake at the start of the cones rather than at the end of the cones. But that's, yeah, not so, not so surprising when we're hitting 160 down there. Now, can we be neat and tidy again? onto the dirt. The trick is not to overdrive the en entrance to this part. You, if you overdrive the entrance, it's very difficult to get neatly back onto the circuit out the other side. Although, having said that, I have then cocked up the... Uh, <laughs> oh, well, we, we got it right pretty much into the uh, into the dirt chicane. We've now got it all manner of wrong through the second part. That's... Then we are out the other side. I think it can be driven worse than that. <laughs> However... There we go. Yeah, I'm going to still have to have a little bit of a break, I think. We've not quite got the grip in the Subaru. And then on, on the brakes into this final corner we go. It's nice having a car that I can actually attack the curbs and not risk falling over. <laughs> Very nice having a car that we can attack the curbs and not risk falling over. What is the first lap? It's a 15-3. Oh, and that was with a little bit scruffiness, I feel, in a couple of places. There is definitely speed to be found in the Impreza into the 14s. Might not be that much of a stretch for this car. It nicely does it out of that first. You've got to be really patient with the throttle out of turn one here. Really very, very patient with the throttle out of turn one. And, well, that was pushing my luck under brakes there. Now, uh, can we get that... Nice and tight on the way in. Ooh, it's a little bit... Yeah, we've overdriven, we've kind of overdriven the second part. However, we are all back onto the tarmac okay. And this time we're not out so wide on the run into the uh, into the hairpin. Now, just don't stall the car as we go through there. That felt neat. Whether it's fast or not, it was fast. <laughs> Oh, that was very fast indeed through all of that. We're almost a second up. Again, neat and tidy. Doesn't look spectacular, but neat and tidy is the way to uh, get lap time. Although that's not neat and tidy. Pushed it too much on the way into the final corner. Ah, oh, damn it. It's a interesting final corner that you get here at uh, Virginia. It's... Uh, <laughs> It's another 15-3. There's definitely... We've got a couple of laps. We've got a couple of laps to uh, get that time. Get that time done. Uh, yes, yeah, interesting final corner here. You kind of break in for the first part. And if you get it spot on, you don't really have to change steering angle. You kind of just bring the car bring the car slow for the uh, the final, final tighter part Sorry, of the turn. It's yeah, an interesting experience. Oh, well, overdriven there. That's okay, this lap here has got a little bit awry as well. Uh, we will probably be okay through this uh, through this dirt section but clonk on the way in is going to have killed the lap time well we're going to have one lap we're going to have one lap in which we're going to have to go well we're going to have to get it right there's nothing like a, a high pressure lap now this is hardly the first time in one of these series we've had that as a uh, situation you know where there's clearly speed and you've got to pull it all together hopefully I can manage it. The Subaru is not too difficult to drive. I mean, sometimes cars that you run in these are running these series are um, yeah horrendously difficult to extract pace out of. Like things like the Woody, for example. There probably is a quicker lap time in that car, but it's just so difficult to get it to be consistent. So difficult to keep the damn machine under control. This not quite so much. This is, is not what I would say a difficult car to drive. It's a difficult course and little mistakes are punished around here. When 
It's a difficult course as it is when we're using our own made-up route around here. Yeah, little mistakes. Little mistakes are very, very costly. Now, not quite as good on the first sector. I might have been a tad early on the brakes into turn one. Now, get through the dirt. There we are. Nicely does it through these first, or through these, this first chicane. Again, try and hold it relatively tight on the way through the hairpin as well. Oh, it's a li little bit of a stall, but we are through there okay. And out the other side, that's the sort of line I like to see. That's the sort of line I want through all of that. And we are indeed up. Now, this is up on that previous best lap, which was good up until the final sector. So to found even more speed through there is uh, not bad going. I don't exactly the same thing, not as wide this time though. I think I'm carrying so much more speed down there than I have been previously that I'm, my normal braking point just wasn't working. I don't think it was as bad though, and indeed it wasn't. <laughs> I thought we might see a car into the 14s. I thought the Subaru might be the vehicle to do it, but my god, that has eviscerated the competition. <laughs> oh, that was a good car. That was a very good car indeed. A 14.3. That is definitely worthy of some celebratory donuts for the Subaru. <laughs> Yeah, I, I still overdrove that final corner a little bit. We got away with it. The car was on the curb. There were wheels on the grass, but I just managed to do enough at slowing it down. Just managed to do enough at slowing that down to uh, not have that really affect the lap time too much. Maybe a tenth, possibly, uh, in all of that. Well, we have... A new leader. It is not quite a second clear of the Lancia 037, but uh, nine tenths is a huge gap, considering how relatively close everything has been in this series so far. For the Impreza to suddenly jump the gap out by that much is mighty impressive. It's a damn good car. It really is around here. Good straight line speed up there with some of the fastest. I'm sure something will beat it in terms of speed later on, but. It is mighty fast, good under brakes, good round the corners, very nice across the dirt section. It's just about got everything covered. So, there we go. We have a new leader. We have a new and very impressive target time. As ever, if you want to leave suggestions for what cars you want to see tackle this course next, please do in the comment section. Well, that's going to be it from me. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time... Uh, goodbye.